One Day at a Time is back. Much to the relief of its of fans and critics alike, uh, the show is currently airing on Pop and is simulcast on Logo and TV Land. I'm Tony Ruiz of Gold Derby here with the writer, head writers of the show, the executive producers, uh, Gloria calderon Kellett and Mike Royce. And, you know, Gloria, when we talked last year, um, we, we were in the midst of this whole thing of, you know, it leaving Netflix uh, and then find, trying to find a new place for it. And looking back on that, what do you think about when you look back on what that whole process was like? Does it seem like a distant memory or is it still kind of fresh? No, it does feel far away. It feels like a long time ago. Maybe, maybe because this quarantine has made a day feel like a year. Like, I, <laughs> I, I feel like that was so long ago. Uh, and also for us in making it, from the time we set foot on the stage again, it had been a year and a half. So it just, it feels like such old, uh, it feels like it was so many years ago. So it's, it's crazy that it, that it, uh, that we're back and we're making it and it's airing and the week to week of it has been so awesome. I've loved it so much interacting with fans every week. Uh, so yeah, it feels, it feels like it, it's, it was a long time ago and we're all, we've all moved on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Mike, I, I've heard several people talk about this, but do you feel a, a difference in the show in that the show is now, a week to week show and not just streaming all the episodes at once. Has it changed how you think people watch the show? Yeah, it feels like an event every time, which is fantastic. Gloria, nicely done on brand. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have mine. It's just here. <laughs> See, I put it on a shelf because I revere it. No, mine is look at, look at the, the coffee stains in mine because I've used it so much. <laughs> But yeah, it, it's it's really fun to be able to make each episode an event, uh, especially because we deal with something different in every episode. Sometimes they're they're um, you know fairly simple family stories, and and sometimes we go into uh, something that's really being buzzed about in the news. And um, to take each episode and just kind of like get into it, uh, get it just to have a discussion about it on its merits, and to watch all the tweets is really finding people reacting to it in, in real time for the live tweets, you know, as Gloria has talked about it, we both talked about, you know, Netflix, it, it was creatively fantastic to be there, but you would dump it, you know, it come out at midnight and you'd wake up the next morning and people watch the whole season and they, they'd be like, here's, I like this part and this part and this part. Okay. See you next year. <laughs> True. So it's fun to be week by week. To be fair, I was probably one of those people. <laughs> um, <laughs> So yeah, the the other big change though is that now you know other than you know when it was on Netflix you had these these uninterrupted episodes and now uh, you have of course the commercial breaks and a slightly shorter running time. Um, I, I saw an interview with Rita Moreno where she had said that she felt like the writing was even sharper. I mean, did that change the way you write the show? How, did 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 you alter course in any way? Not really. It's shorter. I mean, it's shorter. That's really the the only difference. And we always had loose act breaks before, but now we had to figure it out so that the act break would come either sooner or later. Like, you know, it it I, I would say it would affect how we broke up the acts. And so maybe there is like a sharpness. There's certainly a, a speed, like a zippy zappy, because it's faster. Right. I, I've, I've been thinking about this and... Uh... I think it's a little bit of also a confluence of like, this is our fourth season, you know? And so Goy and I have been doing this the whole time. We have some writers who came on board from the beginning. We have some new writers, but generally speaking, we just know we have grown each season to know we're doing more. And uh, that just adds to, I think, uh, sort of our efficiency in telling the story. Yeah. And the actors know how to do it. They know what their characters are. They know how to hit their marks. Like every, it's so it's it's so lived in now. Yeah. So the 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 season, of course, begins with that kind of brilliant opening uh, with the census with Ray Romano as the uh, as the census uh, taker, um, and it also served. It felt like to me, it also served as a way to reintroduce the characters. Was that always the intention? And then. Uh, 
obviously I, I know the connection between Mike and, and Ray, but how did that, how did you decide that, oh yeah, we need Ray Romano to do this? <laughs> We begged Mike Royce to call Ray Romano. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've I've waited a long time to because you know Ray did a sitcom for nine years. He does not want to do another sitcom, and so I've really resisted trying to get him to guest star on this one. And all the um, planets aligned because it was our premiere. It was one scene. It was like help us get off to a good start. So just asking him for a favor <laughs> felt like I was on good solid ground. Um, and it was a hell of a lot of fun. And then he came and he wasn't even supposed to come to the taping. Uh, but he had so much fun at the table read. He's like, yeah, maybe I should go to the taping, you know, and then suddenly <laughs> he's there and doing his old. I mean, he came with all jokes written for himself and, you know, to tr and everything that we did creatively on Raymond, he just did again in a microcosm, which was really fun. So, so going into this, going into this fourth season, um, you know, we've had the three episodes air and, uh, you know, I, I could talk about all of them individually, but we have to talk about the episode that just aired, the boundaries episode. As, um, Mike, I, I read somewhere that you, that, uh, that this was like a joke that had been sitting for a while, that this was an idea for this episode. So first of all, tell people who haven't seen it what the episode's about, and where did this idea come from? Well, I'm just gonna say, because Gloria should talk about this. <laughs> Gloria, like three years ago, was like, you know, we got to do a show where she starts out. She says, "Well, it finally happened." You know, some about you know a door open and. You know, you got a teenager, that happens. Uh, what happened? Oh, he walked in on you? I mean, she walked, you walked in on him? No, he walked in on me. Like, she pitched that. And, of course, we're howling, laughing, but then it's like, what's the story? And then it took us three years. But anyway, Gloria, you hope. <laughs> yes, well, I... Please talk about it. Yeah, I am, a, I am a proponent of women's sexual health and their sexual well-being. And it's something that, like many things on our show, is not talked about often, especially Latinas in a... Catholic family. And uh, it seemed like a fun thing. Like, how can we do a show about women's sexual pleasure? This is a woman who is a single mom. She's still a vibrant and sexy lady. Uh, how can we do a conversation about a, a po sex positive uh, conversation about masturbation and then turn it on its head? Because normally it is the mom come, walking in on the teenage boy and how funny would it be if the reverse were true? And we, but like Mike said, we needed to find the story. We needed to figure out what, what the larger story was and the boundaries was the, you know, was the story, like her, what the boundaries are in this family. And certainly I think all of us being in quarantine, I think it resonated a lot because there are no boundaries for a lot of people that are potting together. Uh, and, and, and I think masturbation is through the roof right now too. There's a lot of articles about that self-love being uh the safest of sexes right now. So uh, it, it kind of worked out in that way where we got to talk about this thing in, in this during this time. Uh, I, I just want to say also that, I mean, it, I, I think we both take great pride in, after the third season of Netflix, we met in Gloria's office a lot of, because we would, this is sort of our, in the off time we get together occasionally, we kind of talk about the stories we want to do for next season. Uh, we put up a grid in a story grid in her office and like the third or fourth episode was like, Alex walks in on Penelope, uh, by the way, again, because <laughs> yeah. we've had the idea now for a bunch of years and it sat there because then we got canceled and then we would meet sadly and just, I don't know, cry for about three months <laughs> and it stayed on that grid. And then we got renewed, finally picked up by Pop. And then we're, you know, takes four more months to get back in the room. And then we're like, it's still there, I think, on yeah. that board, the room. Yeah, yeah. It survived. And, it, you know, last night it just became, it manifested itself into the world, which was yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's great. It's very, very satisfying to have it out there. And it really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but the other thing about it, and I think why the episode works so well is because it is about more than just this one thing. It, it, it talks about boundaries between parents and children. And of course, that, of course, leads to 
a great, you know, uh, Lydia and Penelope fight. Um, are those scenes the most fun oh. to to write? Yes. <laughs> it's so good. I mean, I would say any scene where the characters have a... This is a thing where not every episode has three characters have very different points of view on one thing and and be completely within their character and fight within the framework and POV of their character. And when we are able to do episodes like that, it just is, it's the most delicious because you have Lydia with her point of view, Penelope with her point of view, and then Elena, who's even more like, would talk about it every day to anybody on the street and has books about it. Like she's yeah. once, she's even further along than Penelope, right? So. It, it's so glorious to have those. And then Alex, who just doesn't, would, wants to be anywhere else. And Schneider <laughs> watching it like it's a tennis match. Like, it, everyone just got to be, everyone last night was so funny. And everybody was so good being exactly who their character is with this topic. And that's what the great sitcoms that I grew up watching did. And so, you know, we can't do that type of episode every single week. But when we can do it, it's just so... It's so gratifying. Um, and that also brings also brings kind of around, you know, this kind of surprise at the end with the return of Max. Yes. Um, was that always a plan to bring Max back or did that where where is that relationship going to go? Can you give us any any hints? Well, you know. Do you want to talk, Mike? I feel like I'm talking to you. No, no, no. Go, go, go. <laughs> no, I was going to say. Um, it's you read this a lot where uh, actors are supposed to come on and do one thing and then they just they just meld into that character so much and become such a character favorite. And I think that we didn't really intend for Max and Penelope to get back together per se, but their chemistry, the two actors, their chemistry is so it's a rare thing. It really is. I think because Justina is like such a beast of an actress uh having her have a love interest it needs to be somebody who has a similar strength for it to feel equal for her not to just swallow these men up whole and <laughs> something about big ed um matches her energy and they just have incredible chemistry together and so we were we were thinking about it and where did we want penelope to go and every every time we thought about her dating it always felt like oh we kind of like the fans, uh, we kind of feel like her best relationship was Max. Like that's they they also have service in common, which we haven't really gotten to talk about yet. But they kind of share this language that's even unspoken in that she I think she kind of needs to end up with somebody who gets what she went through. And uh, it couldn't be Victor, sadly, but this guy knows what that was. You know, he was there, too. And they have a they have a, a common. Um, language and the common strength and a common joy for for living and for doing what they both do he's an emt and she's a nurse you know there's just a lot of, of parallels and so it just felt like it felt like they they sh we should revisit and give them another chance so since the show was off the air and then was announced that it was coming back what if what if fans uh have fans like asked you like, oh, now that you're back, will you do this storyline? Or, you know, have they asked for this character? What, what, what has been the interaction with the fans since the show has come back? Well, I mean, yeah, there's, it's, the fans kept us, uh, got us, got us back, you know? So it, it, the explosion of love that happened after we got, first of all, after we got canceled, and then again, after we got picked up again, um, I mean, fans always have specific requests, but it, I, I, what I just love is, um, you know, like there's always a contingent that thinks Schneider and Penelope is going to get together, which is not going to happen. No. <laughs> I don't want, I don't want to harsh anybody uh, who's watching this, but you know, they're best friends yes. and uh, uh, they're, they're, they love each other and they're so many, their relationship's so rich as friends. Um, but it just it, it there are people for whom this show is very important, and I think Gloria and I take a lot of pride in having done and continuing to do stories that resonate with people deeply enough where they feel compelled to write about it and write their experience about it. Um, 
we've had people who use the show as a tool to like come out to their parents or come out, you know, and uh, it's. <laughs> oh, what happened? You got him. To, you got him. <laughs> you can't hide. All right. All right. Anyway, it's great. That's all. End of, end of, end of transmission. Barbara Walters, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that's a first. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but, but the show does mean so much to people like, it, you know, and it touches so many different uh, topics that make it more than just about this Cuban, this Cuban family. Um, it touches so many different communities and professions and age ranges. Um, is there a topic that you have has been on the well, other than the one from the last night's episode, is there a topic that you guys are just go, oh, yes, I really want to, I really want us to dig our hooks into this. Is there a yes. topic you haven't hit? Yet? We can't tell you that because we want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I have to try. <laughs> yeah. Come I mean, on. it's it's happened, though, in the past, you know, like what the, the kind of thing you're saying is like when we did the, the anxiety show, uh, Hello, Penelope. I mean, that was very important to us and, and resonated, you know, you, you feel uh, something when you, you kind of are hooking into something that's going to resonate. It's true. It's true. I would say there are. There are several things we want. I mean, the, the great news coming into this season is Mike and I always do our homework as showrunners. We always come in with tons of ideas and sort of a loose skeleton of an arc for the season. And there's so much, aside from this, masturbation episode, there was so much we didn't even touch on because uh, there was, it was so ripe with story and we had so much that we were, it just was flying out of us. We've never broken a season so quickly um, that we have all the stuff on a list still that we have to do. So there's so much more that we want this family to experience and go through. And we just look forward to the opportunity to getting to do it. Well, I know I couldn't be happier that the show is back. It's it's a big part of our household, and uh, I know many people feel the same way. Everybody, go to goldderby.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned for more uh, interviews throughout the season. Uh, Gloria, Mike, always a pleasure to talk to you guys. Congratulations, and welcome back. Thank you so much. Thank you.